Hi guys, Adam here from Aerospace Innovations. Today I'm going to be taking you through the Intelligent Fuel Boost system. First we're going to do an unboxing of the base kit as well as some of the add-on pieces that we have like the harness and uh, the wing mounting and plumbing kit. Uh, and then later on we're going to move into the installation of this system into a Sling TSI, uh, which may or may not be a separate video depending on time, uh, as well as some more specific assembly instructions uh, for some of the things I'll show you here. Okay, so this here is the base kit. Uh, so this is the main box that most of the components will come in. Uh, we'll have a couple other things as well. So first, uh, for the things that aren't in the box, we've got three double pull single throw switches. Two of them are gonna be replacing your Rotax fuel pump switches. One of them is our boost pump override switch. This is the switch you throw that forces the boost pumps on if anything ever were to go wrong. This is one of two fuel pumps that you'll be getting. So this is our boost pump. Moving into the box, first thing is we've got our mounting rings for the fuel selector. As we're going to show you later, there's going to be a modification that you have to make to the fuel selector shroud. Uh, so these rings are part of that. Over here, we've got a fitting. What this is for is your Rotex fuel pump assembly. On the line that goes to the input, you install this. And then we have a pressure sensor that will go here that I'll show you in just a moment. Pulling the first layer of foam out, this is the fuel selector mounting ring. So this is gonna be, and inside rather, is the fuel selector position sensor board. So this is gonna be what the fuel selector mounts to in the aircraft. And uh, again, there's gonna be a modification required to support this that we're gonna show you. Pulling the next couple layers off further inside the box, this here is an absolute pressure sensor that we're going to be providing. This allows you to see the absolute fuel pressure of the feed side of the Rotax pumps. That's where this comes in. There's gonna be an adapter here. Actually, we're gonna have a new sensor that this is gonna be a little bit different where it's gonna thread direct. And by being able to read the absolute pressure, we'll be able to determine if you're in a danger zone or not for fuel vaporization. These are some 8th inch MPT to 6AN adapter fittings that will get installed in the pumps. Here we have a magnet that's going to get installed in the handle of the fuel selector. We have two part epoxy and a mixing stick for that magnet. These are alignment dowels that we're going to use on uh, the fuel selector ring when we do the installation. And then finally, we have the brains of the operation here. This is the fuel pump control module. One other thing that's in that kit uh, that I did not mention yet is if you don't purchase a harness like this, you're gonna get the connector and back shell for the fuel pump control module. That being said, this is the separate harness. So I'll show you, of course, we have the connector already installed. Moving further along, we've got connectors installed for the fuel pumps themselves. You can see that the fuel pump already has the mating connector on it. We've got ring terminals for the switches on the instrument panel. And then we've got a couple, actually this here, this wire goes into the fuel selector position sensor. And then these are wires that are gonna go into the GEA 24. Uh, one of them is to read fuel pressure off the existing sensor. These are discrete wires for the fuel pump control module to alert you to certain failures. And this is the absolute pressure sensor wire. So again, this is a separate purchase. We do have wiring diagrams available. So if you're savvy to that, uh, you can wire it up yourself with uh, the parts that we provide and the diagrams available online. So another kit that we have available for purchase is the fuel pump mounting and plumbing assemblies. So I have one more or less taken apart over here to kind of show everything that's included in that. So we've got these mounting plates that will clamshell into the wing, which again is gonna be part of our installation video. Uh, this makes it so that you don't have to drill any holes in the aircraft to install. We have pre-made PTFE fuel lines that hook up between the fuel tank and at least get you up to the fuselage. Finally, in the base kit, we've got this pre-filter assembly. The fuel pumps do prefer to have the fuel filtered through a coarse one like this before it, the fuel enters the pump. So we provide this uh, with the base system as well. One item I wanna cover uh, in particular as part of our plumbing assembly really quick is 
I briefly mentioned, you know, that we can interface to our fuel lines if you purchase them or not. These fittings here, these are barbed fittings with eighth inch MPT. You're gonna use these on the outlet of the pump to your fuel lines that are already existing in the aircraft if you're using the sling rubber fuel lines. However, if you're using our fuel lines, you're already gonna have the 6AN fittings attached to the PTFE, so you don't need these. You're gonna use those other adapters that we included in our base kit. So before I go into the assembly of the mounting solution, I just wanna show you a couple of examples of ones that have already been assembled so you can see what the final product will look like. So this one has actually a transfer pump on it as well. So the boost pump has the longer legs on it. The transfer pump has the shorter legs. So you can see that we've got this set up in such a way that you can have just the boost pump or you can also have the transfer pump on there. Here's one with just the boost pump. So you can see obviously this side is missing the other pieces. Speaking of transfer pumps, if you do go with that mounting solution, we also have a plumbing solution that'll work uh, with either the factory steel fuel lines that they use in the quick builds or with the aluminum lines that we've been recommending our customers use when they're uh, assembling their kits from flat packs.